they both had, have had these obsessions with Italian cities, Johnny being Naples and, and Deacon being, being Genoa. So, so very nice kind of link and connection. Deacon would probably consider the best of his portraiture to be the photographs of his friends and acquaintances in Soho. So he's taken wonderful photographs of uh, the so-called London School, the colony room painters, Lucian Freud, Francis Bacon, Michael Andrews, the rather ill-starred uh, Scottish painters, Robert Cahoon and Robert McBride. And really, they are now the, um, the almost the way we see these artists. In 1958, we find uh, Deacon on his travels, and he lands up in Genoa, the subject of the photographs on these walls. And his rather restless eye lit upon the Ittel Cider steelworks, and I think saw the possibilities in the sort of heavy industry that's going on there. It's something that's very, very unlike anything else in the Deakin canon. I mean, Deakin's most famous for his portrait work, but, but an awful lot of the archive I have is, um, is work that is of cityscapes, graffiti, and surrealist, surreal kind of um, vignettes, if you like. But I think he's done um, an amazing job on documenting and seeing patterns in heavy industry, those treads of tires, the tires hanging from ceilings, uh, the conning towers, the gasometers, the smoke rising from the forges, the piles of inner tubes of tires. There's a sort of surrealness to it that you don't find in any other part of John Deacon's work. John Deacon was the sort of photographer of the kind of British art world in Soho in the 50s and 60s, and, and Johnny is the sort of the, the photographer of the British art world in Soho of, of, the, of the 90s and, and, and present day. Well, I started taking photographs quite late in my life, in the mid-90s, and the way I got into it was photographing the London art world, a, a group of young artists which then went on to become known as the YBAs, so it's sort of Damien Hirst, Tracy Emin, Sarah Lucas generation. Those pictures were very much to do with having great access, and I was using an automatic camera. So after a while I realised I was sort of repeating myself a little bit, and, and I needed to really go and learn my trade. So I decided to go somewhere in the world where I didn't have any access, I didn't know anyone, and I thought I'd take a camera which wasn't automatic, it was a manual which required light readings and things like that. So. Um, I was really waiting for an opportunity to come up in this gallery in Naples, made contact and said, why not come to Naples, spend three months here, make an exhibition, and um, let's see how it goes. I find there's something incredibly attractive about pitching up in a city where you know no one, nobody knows you, um, checking into a cheap hotel, getting up in the morning and just walking the streets. It, it's, it's exhilarating and a little lonely. It just disorientates you, and I think you just see things that you wouldn't have noticed if you were feeling too comfortable. The Neapolitan has absolutely no concept of respecting his sort of heritage. And so anything is, is you paint goalposts on anything, whether it's Baroque gates in front of a church or an 18th century palace. And I, I really like that. First of all, I completely like the lack of respect. And I also like the ingenuity. If you've got nothing, you make something out of nothing. This picture is kind of... I, is a, a beautiful picture. First of all, it's got this graffiti that runs all over it, but the kids are just trying to retrieve a football they've kicked onto the balcony. And that, the, the ball is just caught precisely silhouetted against the two open doors. And if it was just an inch to the right, you wouldn't be able to see it. And this is the magic of using film. You have no idea if it's going to work when you take it. It's only afterwards that you go through the contact sheets and find out what works. There's a lot of vintage print. And, there's some, and the majority of, of the neg surviving negatives, Deacon's surviving negatives. Um, so the prints on that wall are, are modern prints um, from, from the negatives, but the prints on, on this wall behind me are vintage prints printed by Deacon, and, and you can see that they're, they're, they're split in half because he was making a mock-up um, of a book for publication um, of his portrait of the city of Genoa. As with so many things uh, that Deacon planned, um, it never came to fruition, and we only have the sort of uh, the remains of the dummy book that he uh, so wanted to turn these photographs into. With many of these pictures, um, 
I witnessed what I was recording once and never again. So, for example, I was in this area called La Sanita, which is in um, a quite rough area of Naples. It's a particularly beautiful place. And I was in the church and I came out and somebody had just set up the swings and there were two boats made out of beaten tin. And this kid is completely fearless. She's just holding on. She's not grim, though. She looks completely relaxed with a feather in her hair. And, you know, I just took a series of photographs and then I never saw that swing ever again. They're brave kids. I'm sure they get up all sorts of trouble. What I think is quite fascinating about photographing Neapolitans, if you look at 19th century photo photography, people respond to the lens of a camera almost as though they're believing there's some sort of magic inherent in the, the process of taking a photograph. And in, uh, you still get a bit of that in Naples, which you wouldn't get in Northern Europe. They respond in a very unique way. And I think, you know, you, if you look at some of the pictures here and then compare it them to 19th century photography, you'll see there's sort of a continuity taking place there. But I think, um, I think Deacon would be pleased to be sort of passing a torch to, onto, um, onto Johnny in, in, in this kind of photography.